Yates. Let's see what the plan is that UAE have thought of. The team directors here are Jan Paulanch and Manuele Mori, two riders uh, fresh out of the peloton with a lot of experience. But um, Adam Yates looking very, very focused here. Chris Froome won in 2013. So uh, the mountain has a little bit of a British touch. Three years in the Tirreno, and then the last time it was actually used in the Giro d'Italia was all the way back in 1975 with uh, Batalin winning the stage. And um, thanks to Mihai telling me that they will be back in the Giro this year on day eight from Spoleto to Prato di Tivo. I think so just we'll be up going, in the Giro. going back in history, I think Balmamio won uh, the year that I was born in 1967. In fact, Herbie Six wrote a, a book on the you know, kind of unsung heroes of the Giro. If you get a chance, read it. Brilliant. I read it because it was in my usually the year I was born. Balmamian won the Giro twice, and he won up here, uh, way back in 1967. That was the kind of knowledge that I didn't have. I did remember that Batalin, of course, a fantastic rider from the 70s, uh, was the last in the Giro to do so. But we will be back here in the Giro d'Italia um, on stage eight. So that is the Saturday, the second Saturday of the race. Here's Paul Double. Just ahead of him, we find uh, Marco Brenner. We have Yanis Wazar, we have Lutsenko, Yates, Sivakov, Kristen, and Ulisi, George Bennett, and Paul Double. That's it. That's what's left of the peloton. Yeah, this could be a, a top nine in the general classification. What way around, we'll have to we'll have to kind of wait and see. But for the moment, uh, Ulisi is setting the tempo. Nine kilometres to go. Paul Double, I think he started today in seventh place in general classification. It'd be good if he could get a little bit further up, potentially kind of try and win the stage. It's going to be very difficult. For me, looking at the uh, the way this race has gone, I have to say Lysenko looks really good, uh, really strong. Adam Yates, although he looks quite good here, um, you know he'll be determined to try and win the stage. Sivakov, sitting third wheel, coming back. It's whether the what do they do with the young Christian here? Because he's sitting second, second wheel. Why is he sitting second wheel? Are they going to ride? Is he going to ride? It looks as if he, he is, because Sivakov is behind him. Um, I hope that's not the case, and maybe Sivakov comes up. But for the moment, they are just riding, you know, kind of hard tempo with Elise. Uh, as you see come from the... the the graph on the right hand side. We still got to go to kind of the maximum point. This was roughly where um, through the kind of town where Pogacar went in the Torreno in 2021. So let's see what Lysenko's got up his sleeve. He definitely looks strong and I think what he has to do is not not wait to be attacked, is to kind of go on the attack and, and try and take well, he's going to have to kind of take a, you know, maybe one rider with him because what he doesn't want is uh, numerous UAE team Emirates with him. All of these riders, apart from uh, Marco Brenner, are at 26 seconds in the general classification from our race leader, from Young Kristen. So um, it's very likely that the man who wins the stage is also going into the uh, blue jersey. So from first to last, Ulissi, Kristen, Sivakov, Yates, Lutsenko, Bennett, Voisar, Brenner and Paul Double. That is the first group at eight kilometres from the line. Good to see George Bennett here for Israel Premier Tech. He, he tried in the first stage, didn't he? He was up there yesterday as well, trying to, to get involved, trying to win the stage. And, you know, he moved teams because he wanted an opportunity for himself and Now's the, the chance of um, you know trying to get that stage win. You've just seen Lysenko, don't know what he's doing, he's just drifting back. Adam Yates was uh, content in following him, um, but now he's going to move back onto Adam Yates' wheel. This is a far superior performance by Team UAE. But what is going to happen when Diego Lisi ends his turn at the front? Will it be Kristen or will he try to attack? Last time we were here, it was a UAE victory by uh, Tadej Pogacar. That was in 2021. 
in the uh, Tirreno Adriatico. Um, a stage from Terni to Prato di Tivo. Um, the final was um, a little bit different than this one, but at the same time, um, if you look at the um, time that Pogaccia did in 2021 for this climb, 36 minutes and 7 seconds. Um, Froome did it in 2013 in 38 minutes, 23, and Nibali did it in 2012 in 38 minutes, 58. Of course, I don't know what the wind conditions were. They might have had a headwind or a tailwind, but uh, the record here is um, Pogacar in 2021, the year that he also won the Tirreno. Second place in that year was Simon Yates at six seconds, Higita, Landa, Quintana, Almeida, Fabro, Simon Carr, Wout van Aert in the leader's jersey that day, uh, the jersey that he lost to Pagacar, and uh, Jakob Fulsang, that was the top ten on that day. I think the only surprise in this first group is actually young Marco Brenner, the uh, German rider who um, started his career straight out of the juniors to the uh, DSM team. Yeah, he changed teams this year and uh, went to Tudor. He's we in the blue jersey now going to the back. It, yeah, I can see him kind of pulling faces a little bit. Um, you know, he has been very active the first two stages. I said, you know, he has to maybe learn something today. Maybe he's kind of patience, but by the looks of things, it's he's starting to lose the wheel. Yeah. I think it's just a, a little bit too much for him now. Not a lot he can do. He was sitting second wheel, and you know that setup suggested that as soon as Elise was 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 gone, he was going to have to do a job. But I think his job is done. I think the the stand I set it up. You have now um, taken it on, uh, and unfortunately, young young Christian has, has started to to look um, in trouble now. And whether he can get through this this patch, but it doesn't look as if UE team members are of any interest in kind of easing off. The only see it will continue. Sivakov now, so I think that answers the question. And I think that's what Jan Christian said a couple of days ago, or or even yesterday. It's all for Adam Yates today. Yeah, and, and can you blame him? This this man is 19 years of age. Had his first win yesterday. Had a fantastic. Um, start to the year with, with a fifth place in La Gelia, second in Milano, Torino. There might have been some celebrating. Of course, it's hard to catch some sleep after all the emo uh, emotions running through you when you have your maiden win, so you cannot blame him. This is the lessons that you have to learn when you're 19. Um, there's big things coming for him, but he will lose that jersey. He will come away uh, from this Giro d'Abruzzo with a stage win, but... Um, Sadly, I think he will also rue that he hasn't been able to do all that much for Adam Yates. Because yesterday he said, tomorrow I'm going to work for Adam. But yeah, he hasn't been able to do that uh, that task as well. This is all a learning experience when you're 19. That's huge. Uh, I know riders that even when they win a stage of the tour, it takes a couple of days um, to kind of refocus again um, because of you know the, the press and family and what they have to do. But you know, the other riders uh, look comfortable. Paul Doubles moved up a little bit. Um, Lusenko now is the virtual leader on the road. Yep. Six seconds ahead of the rest of them, uh, with the exception of Brenner, who's uh, uh, a little bit further back. So that is uh, looking good for Lusenko. Apart from the small fact that he still has got three riders for Team UE uh, in front of him. 6.4 kilometers to go. Steepest part is about to come in about a kilometer, kilometer and a half from now, but it's at steady gradient at about 7%. And I think it's all about uh, who still has got the um, yeah explosive to really try and do something. Um, when Pogaccio won, it was about from this point on, from this village where he attacked. Um, yeah, through the village solo. Attacks. Yeah. Well, you see, big gear really pushing the watts there until um, he can't go no more. But we see Adam Yates. He knows, of course, what happened here three years ago. He wasn't there, but he's going for the Tadej Pogacar strategy. Yeah, the hardest part is the first first to react is Lusenko. No real surprise there, but 
you know, in fact, it was uh, Sivakov that goes first. So it's Sivakov going first. So this is the kind of old one too, and, and they can't just kind of let this happen in front of them. So Sivakov goes, Lusenko there. Um, looks as if it's um, uh, Vozart, uh, but Tudor trying to come now. But I think they have to play the numbers now. And Adam Yates is just kind of looking at it. He does this quite often. Um, he'll look around to see what's happening. Um, that was a tentative move from Sivakov. I think it is all for uh, for Yates. They wanted to try and kind of test um, all the others out, and I think Adam's just going to bide in his time. It's now a waiting game. Ulissi has done his job. Now Paul Double really has to move on. There he is, trying to get back to that uh, wheel of George Bennett. So we have Sivakov, Lutsenko, Vazar, Yates and Bennett, then Double and Brenner, and Diego Ulissi has done his job. Here he goes. A little bit... There goes Adam Yates. Act number two for Team UE. And it's up to George Bennett now to follow the wheel. And as you said before, Brian, really funny because uh, three years ago, it was actually Simon Yates uh, runner up in this stage. And there's always a bit of uh, healthy sibling rivalry going on in the Yates household. And um, Adam will be, uh, will be looking to do one better than his brother. Yeah, of course he will. You know, it is primary <laughs> rivalry and he'll know if they'll, they'll watch the videos he'll know in the back of his mind that's the situation but yeah they're, they're using the numbers now good to see George Bennett was able to kind of follow this time Sivakov is going to go over the top so it's the old kind of one two uh, old tactics um, there we go. Wazard just he just he was at his limit so he couldn't go um, Lusenko can't go either so it's a case of what uh, Sivakov can do now and Adam Yates is just follow so it's a um, good scenario for a UE team Emirates Who's going to catch him? It's now up to Lutsenko. Yates is following Bennett and Voisat. Five kilometers to the finish line. Pavel Sivakov. The Russian, now French citizen, leading the way. Leaving all the work to Lutsenko. And remember, we started this climb 10 kilometers ago with five riders of Astana. Um, and now Lutsenko has to do everything himself. I, I would have expected somebody like Santiago Umba to, to have lasted a little bit longer on the climb, but he was gone pretty soon as well. Yeah, just wait for... Because uh, George Bennett is now gone. Voice art doing a good job. So as soon as uh, Sivakov comes up to Lutsenko, I think he so just try and go over the top again. So, you know, these kind of old tactics. Unfortunately for Lysenko, he's, he's kind of been outnumbered here. Um, but he does look strong. He did this yesterday with Jan Christian and, you know, maybe kind of paid for it in the end. But he's just having the numbers. You have just, just superior here. <laughs> it's a very sneaky attack here by Adam Yates. It's what we call a Sutemelk attack in the Netherlands. Vozard on his wheel, Lutsenko, and then Sivakov goes as watchman. You might remember that um, Adam Yates had to abandon the UAE tour, the one that he won before, after a really horrific crash, a concussion that um, kept him out of racing for the better part of two months, actually. Was uh, that just back. too much for him? He's yep, just winding was, this up. That Adam was an Yates explosion. <laughs> that was an explosion. You, you could, could always hear that, it. You could see that when Wazar was coming up there, he wasn't able to follow Sivakov and... Adam Yates, he, he looks so easy, but he's just winding this up. He's just getting, you know, faster, <laughs> keeping the pressure on. He looks behind, looks so easy. Know that Lysenko's there, um, and I think he, he he'll want to go hard now. He, it's not a case of using numbers, not a case of just easing up a little bit and allowing Sivakov um, to come back and maybe go on the attack. This is a case of, and he did. He's he's done this in the UE tour as well. Um, just winds it up so hard and it's now a case of can um, Lusenko kind of hang on I don't think he can because Adam Yates knows that there's six seconds of a difference between the both of them in the favour of the uh, the Kazakhstani champion Already two wins this year for Adam Yates for stage five in the uh, Tour of Oman that brought us to Green Mountain and the overall classification um, last win for Alexei Lutsenko was the Queen stage in the Tour of Turkey and the overall in the Tour of Turkey last year. Turkey, we should say now. 
I wouldn't count out Lutsenko just yet. There we go. He doesn't Let's want see to what Yates can do. <laughs> Lutsenko doesn't want them to start attacking him. The, the best thing for him to do is to, you know, not wait to be attacked because he, he looked around there. Sivakov was coming back. Adam Yates had eased off, and it means that Sivakov would have got his breath back a little bit when on the attack and Lysenko doesn't want this. He he wants to kind of fight it out for the, the victory here. He's six seconds in general classification in front of Yates. But you have to feel that there's a lot left in the, the tank for it for Adam Yates. Here we go. Lancing. It's it's playful almost, isn't it? What Adam Yates is doing and see how far he can actually push Lutsenko to keep following him. It's just, like you say, it looks as if he's kind of playing a little bit. It isn't kind of fierce attacking. Sivakov is coming back. Just watch what uh, Lysenko does again if he if he comes to the front and, and puts another effort in. But I think Sivakov will go straight over the top. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Try to get uh, Lutsenko a little bit more tired. <laughs> It's a funny game, but look at that uh, Paul Double. He's not that far behind uh, at the moment. Currently in fourth, fifth place in that little group, or together actually, with George Bennett. So in the background, Paul Double is actually doing a fantastic climb here. Well, there's, there's two ways of looking at it. And, and remember when Geraint Thomas finished third in the, in the Tour de France, that's what he's riding for. He's riding for third. Um, shoot him down or not, um, but I think that was a really smart move that's get it done a, a few years ago by targeting the uh, you know the third place in the podium i think by the looks of things paul double even was art um and i think uh, at least he's still kind of hanging on the back there but he's setting a, a rhythm that he cannot go with these attacks and this is a bigger one now from uh, adam yes there's a bit more force in this one forcing lysenko to to react the, the fact that the others were trying to come back means that it's slowed down a little bit but sometimes, as a rider, when you realise that, you know, there's two riders maybe kind of better than each other, um, or better than the rest, and that's uh, Adam Yates and Lysenko. If you want to try and finish third, you cannot go with these accelerations. You have to look at, you know, what you can do. Yeah, now they have gotten rid of uh, Pavel Sivakov. But Adam Yates hasn't got rid hasn't gotten rid of uh, Lutsenko just yet. Yeah, but he's doing a good job, Lutsenko. We did say that he looked strong yesterday, but let's see what Adam Yates has got. That was a bit more of a, a harder attack. It, you know, he's kept the pressure on out the saddle. Um, how much more can Lutsenko take? You got to remember he's defending champion. Six seconds in front of um, from Adam Yates, so Adam knows that he has to put distance between himself because there's only. Four seconds on the line if they finish first and uh, second in the favour of Adam Yates. So even okay. if they come to the line, show saying Adam wins and uh, Lysenko is in second place, Lysenko still leads this race. Yep, yeah, on bonus seconds indeed. 10, 6 and 4 on the finish line. So Yates has to put in um, at least two seconds into, C uh, into uh, Lysenko. If we look at the uh, virtual GC at the moment, it's Lutsenko leading and uh, Adam Yates six seconds behind him. So um, that's the kind of time that he needs. He gets the four seconds bonus if he wins the stage, but he needs a little bit more than that to get into the blue jersey. We do have a challenging finale to come tomorrow, but it might be more for the punchers going into the finish line in Ag Lagila. Um, today is the day if Adam Yates wants to win it. You said Lusenko is the defending champion. This is technically the uh, successor to the Giro di Sicilia that we had at this time slot last year. That was cancelled due to uh, lack of funding on the island. And that's how we ended up here in the rather marvellous Abruzzo region. This is the group with Wazar, uh, Bennett, Ulisi and Sivakov, but it happens here. But Lutsenko is rather tough here. He's not breaking just yet. Maybe yeah, look good yesterday. Look good yesterday, I have to say. Um, doing a little bit too much going with the, all the attacks. He only has to stay with um, Adam Yates. I say only. Yeah. That's all he has <laughs> to do. He doesn't have to attack. He doesn't have to do anything. 
We know he's got a good kick. He won the sprint yesterday, but you know this is uh, this is good for Lysenko. No real surprise. Top two, two strongest riders. Um, Adam Yates. It was always a question, purely because you know he's coming back from injury. Um, but at least he could now got in a second wind. <laughs> That is absolutely stunning because if it comes to a good finish kick, we have, of course, Ulisi. And, um, well, if he can take away a few of the bonus seconds that um, that Lutsenko might be after, that could also be a solution to, uh, to our problem. Yeah, the only problem is Ulisi's 52 seconds. This is a turn up for the books. Um, Oof. Lutsenko looking super strong here. What is Yates hmm. doing here? Is he just... Slowly coming back and going to put up, you know, real strong attack over the top. You know, it, it, Yates, if he's on top form, would have done exactly this. Just, just kind of played a little bit and then bang, one killer punch. Is that the Yates that we've got here? Or is he still needing, you know, a few percent to come back to his best? Yeah, he's, he's been out of racing since since February, actually, since that crash in the UE Tour. So what you hear from riders who've been out of races for quite some time is, is really finding that race mode back, the explosiveness that you need in races. You can do all the endurance training that you need, but you need that little bit of extra in racing. But Ulisi is back and he might actually be going for it. Ulisi is also in the same time as Adam Yates, but he's now going to up the pace. What a fantastic ride here by Diego Ulisi. We have seen him done this, do this before, on uh, on climbs like this, but uh, Ulisi is on grand form here. He is, but I think he has to realise if putting his uh, earpiece in, he has to realise that Sivakov is just behind. And in fact, um, Ulisi started the date 52 seconds. Um, so, oh, sorry, I'm yeah. not too sure that he's doing the right thing here. Um, whether Yates has told him, look, set a tempo. Um, hard so that I'm going to go over the top here um, and see and really can attest Lysenko but we're getting close to the last kilometre it's kind of running out of time what is Lysenko going to do about the two riders of Team UE we're going into the final kilometre it's still about 6.8% average the, the final kilometre here so no steep sections like we had in the little town of Pietra Caramela it's uh, probably maybe coming down to a sprint. What does Adam Yates still have left? What does Lutsenko still have left? Can Sivakov maybe just profit from the fact that uh, these three riders at the front are looking at each other? Or at least he completely committing to Adam Yates? That's yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm more looking at um, Lutsenko now. This is looking you know, better and him. better. The closer we get to the finish now, you've got to remember that uh, Adam Yates has to put at least two seconds into mm. the rider in front of him, number one, if he wants to win this race. And then we all discussed about the tactics of Team Astana, and you said, I'm just going to eat my words here if Lutsenko pulls it off, but it looks more and more likely that he does. He has won more races and then Adam Yates has, the last one being in uh, Turkey in, uh, in 23, the overall, and that really really challenging mountain uh, stage that they had there 500 meters to go Ulisi upping the pace keeping the pace really really high Lutsenko on his wheel what can Adam Yates do about this this is 500 meters to go a really wide road for these two riders hardly any win to speak of it's going to be a very tight battle. Lutsenko, thanks to the bonus seconds that he took on the line yesterday, is now six seconds ahead of Adam Yates. If he wins, he is going to be, of course, the blue jersey. But also, if he's second, he also gets the leader's jersey. Adam Yates has to attack right now if he wants to win. But Lutsenko is mightily strong today. Ulisi, with the final push towards the finish line for his team captain. Does Adam Yates still have anything left in his final 300 meters to uh, try and get past Lutsenko. It's all looking very good for the man from Kazakhstan at the moment because uh, despite everything that they threw at him for Team UE, five riders against one, it looks like Lutsenko still has got the legs to pull it off. Adam Yates doesn't have the legs. This is a rather fantastic victory for Alexei Lutsenko. He was strong on day one, he was strong yesterday, and today it's a win for the champion from Kazakhstan. He's also our new leader. 
strong. Well, I will eat my words. That eat was an exceptional <laughs> performance from uh, Lusenko there. Now we're battling out for the kind of minor places. Was are coming up here, George Bennett. You can see that uh, Sivakov um, is going to finish in sixth. Good performance there from Paul, Paul Double in seventh place there. But we saw yesterday that uh, Lusenko was looking strong, covering so many attacks, just too many in the end. But he played that right. And Adam Yates didn't have it uh, in the end. And you have to say that um, you, Tim Emirates, you know, were wanting in the end. Just came up uh, against a, a stronger rider. Well done, Lysenko. Good ride as well here by Marco Brenner. Also find himself uh, up in the top eight. What's the expression? They threw everything and the kitchen sink at him. And uh, despite that, he still uh, managed to win. Then you are the strongest on the day. I did look super strong yesterday. Um, you know, he said in an interview a couple of days ago, you know, when you come back to a race, although it's not Sicily, when you come back to a race and, you know, you're number one, he struggled from an altitude training camp. He said he had good legs coming off a, another camp and, you know, he was ready for this one and... You know, he had to do it alone yesterday, had to do it alone today, but Adam is not quite at his best there. Couldn't get rid of Lysenko. At least he's doing a really good job, considering he had to kind of ride a little bit further down. Sivakov not quite there yet, but although you, he had the numbers, Lysenko had the legs. And, and I think for Adam Yates being um, being outside the peloton for almost two months, then this is the kind of race legs that you might miss in the final. You know that explosive, that explosiveness that's really hard to train, uh, that you can only find in race situations. Rather disappointing performance there for Pozzo Vivo, especially if you remember that the Giro is about 25 days away from now. But Jan Christen, ah, you can't blame him. He's just 19. Luca Matisse just ahead of him. And then Jan Christen, two and a half minutes behind Alexei Lutsenko. He will be sorry to uh, find out that his uh, team leader didn't win but uh, there was nothing we could do there was nothing you could do about Alexei Lutsenko he made his intentions very very clear Brian from day one actually he did um, yesterday I was kind of fearing for him because he, he didn't have any teammates with him he was kind of on his own he was doing a lot of the riding and in the end he couldn't do anything about Jan Christian but having just to follow it looks as if you know, Adam Yates looking for two seconds. I think Lysenko has put two seconds into them, come the finishing line. Um, but yeah, just Adam Yates, as you touched on, a couple of months out of racing, um, just going to fail to deliver in the end. They looked good. You know, he gave everything. So did Elise, so did Sivakov. But unfortunately, you know, you can see both riders head down at the end, just beaten by a stronger rider. Yeah, despite the numerical advantage that they had at Team UE, it was Astana. Astana's Alexei Lutsenko pulling it off. His first victory of the year ahead of Ulissi, Yates, Vozar, Bennett, Sivakov, Paul Double, Marco Brenner, Carboni, and a 10th place there for the medical.